Hey everybody, it's your good pal Gimb, and uh, I want to start this week off, I, this is after recording, just by saying that we talk about Baki this week, and the anime is pretty fun, that's what I was watching, but then talks about the manga adaptation, and it kind of gets to, po- uh, it talks about some stuff that's not too nice, like there's sexual aspects to it that aren't great, a lot of people wouldn't want to hear, so this is your trigger warning for uh, like graphic sexual content, it's only talked about a little bit, but yeah, it's in the episode, but... Uh, Other than that, we have a good-ass time, so it'll be good. It'll be a fun episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shack Outback. Hello, everybody. Hear the news. Gather around. There's a guy named Jim. I gotta cut the last part of that. You gotta say it again. I can't <laughs> yeah. complete my last name. Jim, I've said my last name before. I'm the only one getting doxxed here. Yeah, I get fucked. Um, yes. So this week on Shack Outback, this wonderful, wonderful Shack Outback nights. Jim's on the night shift for four yep, days, yep, and this yep, is the yep. middle of it. So he's fucking dead inside, and he's Jim's recording going Shack Outback. insane on the night shift. I'll wake up to the Discord server we're in, and he'll have sent ten messages to himself saying lunacy, <laughs> and I'll have to read it all. We we'll talking about like all the weird shit I had to do on the <laughs> night shift. Yeah, uh, but this is episode twenty eight, seven or eight. I think twenty eight. I think I think it's twenty eight of Shack yeah, Outback. That sounds right. Baki. It's Baki day. Ah, uh, one of my favorite shows. I love Baki. I love the manga, and it's a. I'll get into it, but I fucking love Baki. So, uh, as always, we're going to start off here with uh, the terrible, the exciting, the the luxurious, like, masterful uh, the amazing, fucking... The amazing, bi-weekly breakdown. Talking about what we've done. Breakdown. And is a big thing that happened in the last two weeks. The big, huge, deep... We can't talk about it too long. We can't talk about it too long. You talking but, about Deep Rock, bro? Yeah, the Deep Rock Galactic update came out uh we can't really talk about it for that long it's amazing sexy as hell yeah i don't want this episode to turn into that but it's an insane update it is massive it's bigger than i thought it's bigger than new mission type new enemies new guns battle pass that's free cosmetic Cosmetic tree tree. they got they got us taking script like it's 19 fucking 32 we're working for a mining railroad they're giving me their script to use in their stores that's completely legal uh yeah it's all good i fucking love it like the new update's crazy I think I've played like 24 I've hours played, in the last two I, about weeks. About the same, yeah. I've played yeah. about 25 or 26 hours currently, but I'm loving it. I'm really excited to see how this game's going to look in a year or two. She yes, me died. too. Jim died. Uh, what else have you been doing, Manuel? What else have I been doing? i kind of just been hanging out. I haven't really been doing much. I've just been uh, Movies. watching some anime and stuff. I anime. Realized- yeah, I started watching, uh, it's an anime called, Ta- so I finished Gundam Seed, and I was like, you know what, let me start some seasonal stuff, because Cass and I also finished Yu Yu Hakusho, and I was like, let me start some seasonal stuff, I feel like I've been missing out, so I started, uh, an anime called Tact OP Destiny, and I also started watching the second season of a show called 86, which is really, really good. Was that about 86? Uh, 86 is about these people that, uh, there's this, there's this area of the world that's in a war with another area that's a fully autonomous robot army. So this, this area of the world is like, yeah, we we made our own autonomous drones. They're fighting and we're winning the war, but like, it's, it's a whole, uh, propaganda piece. Like there are actually people in there, what they say are autonomous This is drones. what happened. Dan it's watched really fucking, Dan watched fucking the Wolf Brigade. Now he's into political <laughs> intrigue. It's really good. It's, uh, yeah. So there, the 86 is the 86th district of the city that's on the outskirts. So it's just people that are in these autonomous drones that are just like walking coffins, essentially. Walking coffins. It's, re- it's really, really good. What else? What else, Dan? What else? What else? Uh, just working. Storage Mart's been bumping. Uh, I haven't really been reading much. The cat's no. been adjusting. We've just been kind of hanging out. Let's get, a, let's get our let's get our rhubarb update. How's rhubarb doing? Rhubarb's doing good. She uh she has learned where her favorite toy is. So every morning I'll usually pull out one of the toys that I play with her with, and it's like a really big plasticky wand type of thing with like it's the same material that would be on like a Chinese finger trap at the end, and I whip it around the room, and she goes insane for it, and she's learned that it's in the uh. 
Sorry, she's learned that it's in the storage closet, so she'll meow and like try and open the door and stuff when she wants to play with it because she knows it's there. How 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 uh, similar is your life with rhubarb to the uh, Junji Ito cat book? Uh, it's it's about the same. She scares me sometimes. Like I'll be petting her, and then I'll look at her, and her eyes will get all wide, and I'm like, I know she's going to attack, or she's going to sprint out of the room at a thousand miles an hour, and it's going to scare the shit out of me. I, I but, like uh, yeah. I like cats. I've I've enjoyed like living <clears> with my so roommates' much. cats. They're very cute. They yeah. fucking like sometimes they just terrorize each other. But other than that, they're very cute. Jim, boys. what have you been up to? Tell me what Jim has been me, up to. Me, me, Jim. What cryptids have you seen? Uh, <laughs> what what have I seen? What cryptids have you seen, Jim? Walking around uh, the hallways. So I got a job, and it's a lot of like <clears throat> you get a lot of like breaks, like more breaks than I was used to at my old job. And, um, so I get like half an hour break. So I've been reading books. I've been buying stuff on Kindle and reading it. So I think a few weeks ago I talked about Lonesome Dove. So I've been reading all the sequels and prequels to Lonesome Dove. <clears throat> so I read two books already in the last like month. One was Streets of Laredo, which was the sequel to Lonesome Dove. And it was really sad. One was Dead Man's Walk, which is the prequel to Lonesome Dove. And the prequel, watching... the sequel? Jesus. And, and then I'm watching another prequel called Comanche Moon. And uh, I think that's the best one I've read so far out of the uh, the sequels and prequels and stuff to Lonesome Dove. I think that the uh, the author of those books, I think his name is like Larry McMurdy or something. He's probably dead. I don't care. I think he does a good job at like character writing. But like, uh, I think it's problematic reading cowboy books and they're talking about like native people and stuff and the way they're thinking and stuff like that. So it's kind of like weird. And the women characters, especially in the book, are a little like weird and stilted but yeah. I, I don't know i think the character writing is good enough to keep reading they're good enough to read on my fucking breaks and shit and during like little clears i get um, on, i was moon's got a guy named buffalo hump in it how's he yeah buffalo hump is the main like antagonist of uh dead man's walk and comanche moon huh he's got a big hump on his back <laughs> oh. and then i've been I, wrote, I watched like the first season of disney's Fillmore one afternoon so uh, you keep saying this, and I don't know what you're saying. Film. Fillmore. Fillmore. Yeah. What the fuck? Cornelius is Fillmore? Fillmore. What the fuck? Did you even have a childhood? Look up Disney's Fillmore, you luddite. How do you spell that? F i l l m o r e. Fillmore. I've. N oh no, I do know him. No, I don't. I was thinking of the guy from Gorillas that plays the drums. That's not him. No. That Disney's Fillmore is the best like kid show that I've like revisited. In I've the last never few seen years. this in my it's life. It's just like a good ass fucking show. Like it's just like a good ass like it's like supposed to be like a cop show, but they're kids, so they're like hall monitors, and it's like full of puns and like good character writing and different stuff like that. It's really, really funny and really good still. Huh. Um and Dan forgot we watched Lamb. Oh yes, we watched Lamb. I, I liked Lamb a lot. I brought my friend Jaden over to Dan's place, and we Dan made curry, and we watched Lamb, and I laughed harder than I have <laughs> in months. <laughs> Lamb was good. I liked it a lot. I've been thinking about it. It was fucking hilarious. I, <laughs> do you want to spoil it a little bit? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you were going to see Lamb, I think you probably would have seen it already, because it's not very expensive to rent. It's like 20 bucks to rent, so... It came out a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, it's it's relatively new, it's, but it's, it's one of those movies that if you wanted to see it and you knew it was coming out, you would have seen it. It's the lady from Prometheus and the girl with the dragon tattoo movies, the the Swedish ones. She Is plays it? like yeah, she plays yeah. like a fucking Icelandic farmer with her husband. And their kid has died or something, and they, like, adopt a lamb as their kid, and this is what made me laugh. The lamb starts, like, morphing into a half, like, sheep, half person, <laughs> and every time you see it, it's, like, really, really funny. But I think the movie kind of cheats with, like, cinematography, because they're in Iceland, so it's just nice in general. Anything and you just take a picture of or take a video of just looks nice, because it's Iceland. I really liked, uh, I talked to you about before about this movie called Rift that was also set in Iceland. I think that movie, it kind of used Iceland too as a good backdrop, but it was also just like a good ass film, like a good ass, like really good premise, like really good film. I think Lamb has gotten really popular because it has a big actress in it. And it's it's fucking ridiculous. Has, has it gotten popular to the extent of other A24 films or is it just kind of hanging out in the back? Lamb? Like, how, yeah. Like how did it Yeah, I think so. I've heard a lot of, I don't know about that, but I've heard a lot about it. Like it's, I think it's like culturally, like it's significant. Like people yeah. actually know what it is and talk about it. Hmm. Um, and then I, uh, what have I been doing? I've been playing the cat lady. Dan bought something. What did you buy? 
Oh, that you got the the special yeah. gift for? I bought Death Stranding. Dan yeah, bought, Death bought Death Stranding, Stranding from a key reselling site. Was everyone that booed Dan. Selling site was fanatical. Everyone, everyone booed Dan, and uh, they gave him a free Steam key, and he was laughing. He's like, "This game looks weird. I don't There's know." Some and I, bullshit game that Jim wanted to play, and I, I was like, "Bro, that was the same studio that did <laughs> the Cat Lady. I want that." And he sent it to me, so I'm gonna replay. I'm replaying the Cat Lady a little bit. I'm going to play that game. It's called, like, Lorelei, I think, or something. I'm yeah, gonna play that I think too. you're right, Lorelei. The That's Cat something. Lady is the most dour, depressing video game I've ever played in my life. It's about uh, an older lady. She's probably, like, 40-ish. She lives with her cats, and she fucking kills herself, and then has to come back, and she can't die, and she has to, like, save people from, like, depression and shit. It's really fucking sad. Wasn't there, sad. like, a problem with that game? Like, wasn't it crashing on you? I, I remember Yeah, you but then I, I literally, like, like, just sent a message to the creator oh, of the yes, game, you told me and that. he just said, yep, you can fix it like this, and I was like, oh, yeah, thanks, man, and it worked. So, yeah. Nice. It'll, it'll be good. Now, that's the good thing about little indie devs on Steam is you can be like, bro, oh, but shit's not working. It'll be like, all right, here's some, here's the recipe for beef strong enough. They'll be like, okay, I'm going to pull your game from your launcher and disable the launcher. And then we're not going to give you your money back. And that's Rockstar. <laughs> uh oh my god yeah before we get into the topic i think the other funny thing that i've seen this week is those gta remasters they look fucking terrible it's not even funny like it's it's mind-boggling every day like lately with what's going on on the internet with nfts and like stuff like that it's like one day i'm gonna wake up and it's just gonna be a sick joke and i'm not gonna be a part of the joke like it's dan will be the man who laughs just doesn't feel real well it does make sense that like they're selling the three gta games in a remaster with air quotes for 80 dollars yep. and you can go to a fucking game cycle or like a used video game store buy a ps2 for like 20 or 40 bucks buy all three t three gta games for like three dollars each buy an hdmi d adapter plug them into a tv and that would be a much better experience because they have oh, all yeah. the music they have all the unfucked with, like, character models and stuff and stuff like that. I thought they would have fucking, like, got some of those music licenses back to no, release no, those games. And you, they didn't. That's they didn't fucking care. hilarious. That's yeah. so fucking funny. Yeah, it's only 80 bucks if you want it. That's fucking atrocious. Yeah, it's That's only fucking bucks. terrible. I can't yeah. believe that shit. Yep, that's the uh, modern game industry. That's why we buy indie games. That's why we keep playing Deep Rock Galactic till we die. Yeah, and there are people that are defending that. You know that I've seen that so much online. That, why do Sheeple. you guys? Why do you guys have to nitpick everything? Just enjoy the game and have fun. It's it's the consumer mindset. Just get excited for new product, eat new product up, and then just get excited for next new product. Never question anything. I was talking about that with my job a little bit about like the mentality of just like coming to the work and like getting your job done and going home with your money and like I think that's just not something that I'm interested in. Like I'm no, not. Yeah, I'm neither. not interested in just turning my brain off and like yeah, doing like approaching Hating life yourself. like that. Yeah. yeah just going along with it because there's nothing you can do to change yeah that's kind of not nice but yeah. uh yeah let's talk about cooler things such as big huge dudes in underwear punching each other big big sexy homoerotic men give each other a good old punch so dan they're homoerotic and this is the straightest show i've ever seen man all those jiggling man muscles and sweaty naked bodies grinding <laughs> against one another yeah that's yeah. that's the most straight thing i've ever seen in my life but dan <laughs> You, this is your topic, Baki. You introduce it. What's up with Baki? Okie dokie. Baki is a fighting manga, I guess you could say. It's so much more than a fighting manga, but it's a fighting manga written by Kesuki Itagaki. And uh, Jim, I bet you'll be ecstatic to know. Did you know Kesuki Itagaki also has a son? Okay. Do you know what the son is famous for? Pedophilia? Is this the guy you're talking about? Oh, that's he his daughter. He writes Beastars, yeah. Oh, he, that's his daughter, yeah. There's a lady yeah. who writes Beastars. Yeah, pa Perry Oh, is that, is, that, is that... I believe it's his son. Who is the who is the person you're talking about who was a pedophile before? Oh, um, Rooney Kenshin's author. I don't know his name off the top of the head, but that's a pretty big thing in the anime circle if you know anything about older stuff. R the author of Rooney Kenshin is a convicted pedophile, and Rooney Kenshin's, like, one of the big ones. Like, it's that's huge. Fucked. Yeah, but no, like I knew that the lady who made Beastars, her dad was like a famous like manga yeah, artist or him. something. This is him. This is him, Jim. So yeah, Kesuki Itagaki writes Baki, and Baki follows the story of uh, the the titular Baki, and he wants to become the strongest man on earth. It's a lot more than that, but at the end of the day, I forget where it's from. I think it's in the original manga run, 
but there's a quote that's like there's children that always like every little boy dreams about being the strongest man on, man on earth and these are the people who never gave up on that dream <laughs> so they're truly working to be like beat armies and stuff by themselves and it's is just it is there mental. is there is there a lot more preamble in the manga? Because, like, I felt like... Because I watched the first Baki series on Netflix. Yes. The first, like, big one. Because I know there was another one that they got made in the early yes. 2000s. So there I is the a metric shit ton of Baki. Like, a fuck ton of shit. You want me to go through it? Sure. So the first story, it's written in 1991. I've read most of the original run. And you can't get any of this in English legally like i the moment they re-release all of this in english and nice hard covers i'm gonna buy it fucking instantly because i love this show um you can you can read it though facebook doesn't let me send the link because it must flag it but it's just manga-backy.com and it's all super high-res scans made by fans so that's where i read it that was the same uh, thing with Beastars yeah. before Beastars got translated. You could just read it online. Yeah, yeah, same type of thing. And it's like it's it's the first google search if you search in backy manga so i don't really know if they just don't care to take it down, like it's it's not hidden or anything, it's just there. What's well, the so, only? Um, this is the yeah. thing that like, what are you gonna do? Take that site down, and then sixteen more sites yeah, I pop know. up. <laughs> yeah, like, there's just no fucking point. Yeah, but uh, Baki the Grappler came out, or Grappler Baki, as most people will call it. it. It ran for eight years, so that's the first one, kind of. And then there was Baki, or and all of them have multiple names. Baki was the next series called. That's like, one I watched. Yeah. So that's new grappler Baki or strongest hero. And then there was Baki Hanma that was son of ogre. That's where he goes to jail, right? That's where the anime titles are. Yeah, they're very different. I don't really know what's up with the anime titles. There's two Netflix original anime, which are both very good in my opinion. And one of them is just called Baki and one of them is just called Baki Hanma. And they don't really have anything to do with the specific manga arcs or anything. They're just kind of called that. Yeah, like... And then there's back Baki Baki is still going on technically. Like Baki Do is still going on and it's Baki, Baki style. Yeah. That's 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 the sidekick to, to Scooby Boo, right? Baki, yeah, Baki yeah Scooby Doo and Baki Do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Baki Do's still going on and there's a shit ton of side stories about all the characters. And there's a bunch of OVAs. I think there's two or three OVAs, which are like the stuff in the nineties, like you said. They're the little original video anime. So to prep for this, I literally just yeah, watched. Yeah. So what did you watch? F- I watched the first part of the Baki of the Netflix just called Baki, the and that's the one in which the death row inmates. Death row inmates. Okay. Per- yeah. So so that's the first one that came out on Netflix. The newest yeah. one is twelve episodes long, and it follows yeah. the prison arc. I don't know what it's officially called. I call it the Unchained arc or the Texas prison arc. I think it's some called something. Baki like that. Unchained. Yeah. Pretty much. But uh, what, what was your initial thought of this, Jim? Because this is a big ask. This is a weird looking show and yeah. it's not normal. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that this is this kind of thing that I'd watch on my own. It was definitely like it took me out of my comfort zone watching this. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. I do have some problems with it. But I think the only main problem I have with the show is that like when they use 3D animation to like a little bit sometimes it looks like it looks like fucking garbage it looks like a ps2 game yeah but like i like the characterization that they do through fighting because all the show is right is fucking dudes walking up to one another (laughs) and going i am the strongest man to ever be a a man and strong and then they fucking fight and they talk about fighting and how the other ones has a weak spirit you learn about xyz you learn about why the one fighter eats hot dogs on tuesday and why he only cuts one half of his pinky toe nail because that makes him truly stronger and you learn that uh yeah all that shit you learn one of the the first fights that i saw in this show was uh it was dorian versus yes. the bald guy with the eye patch in the street i don't know what his name is called like Orochi Ar- 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 dopo I Ar- believe. yeah yeah and they were fighting in the street in in tokyo and um they were talking to another and then fucking dorian he's my favorite character so far, <laughs> like dorian. Dorian. <laughs> he's like he has like super dental floss that's like one yes. millionth of a micron thick that's like made of like steel or something and he cut off the bald guy's hand with it he literally like had, had him punch him, but he used it to like cut his hand off. And then the ball guy's like staying there for like two minutes, like oh, and they're all talking around. I'm like, what's he gonna do? What's happening? Oh god! And then Dorian's like, you see, this fucking dental floss is so strong, blah blah blah. And then 
And then the bald guy says, I always thought. I trained for years. I broke my knuckles a hundred times to cut through things. And now you have removed a thing that's holding me back. And he throat punched him with the fucking stump of his fucking arm. <laughs> so it's a lot of shit like that. It's, it's a lot of insanity. It's not normal fighting. Like every single person in this manga has their own form of fighting. And it's their own story based around that form. You'll never see two dudes that are just like, I trained in boxing yeah me too this is a boxing match it's like i trained in boxing and i can run around and i like to go on the ground and run around like a crab and i'll hit you and i trained in boxing with my master who can walk on walls it's always weird shit so the, the beginning of Baki, the Netflix series Baki, it's like Baki's a man. He's he's like a 17-year-old kid. I think he's like the least like interesting Jim, character in the whole thing. Yeah, that first Baki thing, Cassie had the same problem with that. It's really not about Baki, and it's no. not a great introduction for the character. I think the newer series does it way better. I think that like they don't have a lot of background for Baki. Like you see no, his not dad at a all. little bit. You need to know and then, something like, about him. He's like going on dates and stuff, but they'll show like flashbacks and shit of like stuff that has which gone is, on beforehand yeah. which is not good storytelling no it's not good at all but for all the death row inmates the five of them who get introduced in this series like they have like big backstories like dorian he's in like he's literally like <laughs> on the gallows wasn't being he fucking getting hung. Wasn't and then he's like he's, he's been yeah. dead for like 10 minutes they pull him down <laughs> and he kills everybody he runs into the thing and the other guy spec i they like fucking spec. like they fucking fry his brain. They put him in the electric chair and then he's dead. And then he just like <laughs> shoots out and he kills all the guys and runs he, out and he, shit. He swam up from he like swam 200 up a fucking submarine. For, yes, that's what he did. I like the Russian dude who climbed out from the missile silo on the flat surface. Sporsky. That was fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> or Yanagi, the Yanagi, the other, the Japanese death row inmate who can like, poison hand, right? this guy literally, this show's fucking ridiculous. He like, punches he like grabs the elements from like concrete and wood <laughs> and something else he turns them in the most deadly gas and he, into his body and he can shoot them out of his fucking mouth so he escaped by like he didn't he created a vacuum in his hand and and blew up the people's brains that were the security guards around him That's he, he blew did. a hole in bulletproof glass <laughs> And then he fucking, like, killed one guy with the same thing and then shot gas out of his mouth into the other yeah, guy's mouth and killed he, him didn't instantly. Didn't he blow into his ear or something yeah. and blew out his brain? It's just so fucking stupid. This, I, that's what I'd say about this show. This show is fucking stupid. <laughs> fucking stupid. I'm fine saying that. I love stupid shit. It's pretty fun. It's it pretty is fun so stupid, far. stupid, and yeah, I like it a lot. So yeah, The Prisoner, this one is... The prisoners all hear about... Because Baki is known around the world. Like, his dad and him are known around the world to be the strongest people. And these prisoners go to Japan to no defeat. That's the reason that they want to travel and fight. They don't they talk to another. They to lose. All their, they talk about this beginning that, like, it's something like animals will know when there's a natural disaster yes. coming they will all link up together. Yes. And all these guys escape <laughs> at the same time. It's just, it's and just they all like say, instinct. They all say, I want to know defeat, so I'm going to Japan <laughs> to fight everybody. Oh, it's just instinct. Oh, it's so amazing. I want to talk about, like, because there's two American death row inmates, and they're characterized very differently, and they're also defeated very differently. The first one who gets in a big fight is Speck, and he fights the, uh... Oh, he's I gonna, he's, Speck was an American he, dude, yeah, yeah He yeah. was trying to fight Baki, but then he fights uh, the Yakuza guy. He What's fights Hanayanma, that's my... Hanayanma is one of my favorite characters in the show, Jim. He's one of my favorite Baki characters. This is the fucking most drawn-out fight I've ever seen in an anime where, like... <laughs> Specs like fighting him and fighting him, and then like he shoots out the other guy's cheeks, and then like they shoot missiles at each other, and they do like crazy shit. And Hanayama takes him to like the police station, well, don't and then uh, and then Spec kills all the police officers and breaks out, and lifts the car, and throws it, and then uh, and then the other guy has to like beat him up again. But when he finally is defeated, Spec like is in like at a hospital bed, and then the doctors are like, "We've seen this before," because he looks like a fucking decrepit ancient man who was like a hundred years old when you lose the the spirit in your soul there was a treasure hunter who found his treasure and he aged 50 <laughs> years in a week so like spec lost and he turned into like a He's 97 like a year old man yeah, yeah. i, I so like funny. the spec fight because they go through like they fight on the street and then they fight through the park and then they fight through the police station <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of stages to it, which I which yes. I enjoyed. Doesn't, I like that they doesn't spec smash a big lamp post on his head a bunch of times. Yes. <laughs> I also, just love it. 
Dorian took longer. Like Dorian's the other American like fighter, and he's Dorian's like Dorian's the, the dirty fighter. Yeah, he's like he's like the typical like Americanized character. Where he's yes. got like he looks like a biker, and he like yes, fights really yes, dirty. Yeah. He has like an explosive in his palm. He has like a sword in his boot. He's got like <laughs> dental floss that'll cut people's He'll, like, legs throw and arms oil off with. in your eyes and dirt in your oh, face. And he shit. fights the guy in a sewer. So his backstory yes, is so fucking does. crazy that he was like 16 years old <laughs> and fighting in World War Two. So he has a fucking bunker that he knows to get to in japan and he goes there another guy comes and he and he this is the most american thing i bet Jap- oh, japan was just looking sat- up american that, that stuff that fight was like eerie to watch i didn't like that fight at so, all so he had like a prohibition fucking like fighting stance where he covered his hands in fucking grease <laughs> and then he put glass on his hands and like punched <laughs> the other guy to, almost to death like just cut him up horrendously with his fists like it, i i like that um Yes, the show has a lot of talking, but it's also like characterizing the characters with like how they fight and it's, where it's they're their, from. It's every single style of fighting is completely their own. Every single person in the story, every single person in Baki fights completely differently. Because I know that Yanagi, I haven't seen him do a big fight, but he did a little one with like uh, with the little karate master and yes. and uh, Baki. Yes. Uh, he fought. I don't know what those things are called. The little sickle things. They're called like tantos or yeah, something. Where he's on, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That are on chains. Like, traditional japanese uh yeah. weapons and stuff but that was that was good and then like the americans fight with like really backhanded things and stuff like that it was really good that's a really good element of this show mm-hmm. um it's really funny uh, i also like how dorian gets defeated too where he gets out dirtied by the Hundy. other guy <laughs> and uh and then he's his mind breaks much like speck who's taken out of the, <laughs> the, the thing by like aging a million years in like a day uh dorian's brain breaks and he's just like looking out the windows going candy my dad won't let me buy <laughs> just, me oodles just of candy candy he's he's like a he's like a vegetable now like he's like and the guy who like hated candy. him the guy who got beat the fuck out of him by him was like don't worry dorian i will buy you lots oh, of candy God. and he's like oh will you and that's the last time i fucking saw him <laughs> so fucking ridiculous i love it jim i love it yeah so you've met biscuit oliver right the mr unchained the huge black dude yeah i just like got like because this came out in two parts so i watched yes. the first part the first 13 I episodes I, did, I, they, I met biscuit oliver and uh yeah that's his name a eh? biscuit biscuit mr unchained so uh have you really met baki's dad yet in the first season you i saw like i saw like like little asides with him like he was watching tv and like working out and stuff and being like ah yes baki blah 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 and then he went on a date and he said baki knows love now blah 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 that's the thing jim you have to you can only be so strong but when you have sex with a woman you get even stronger that's literally one of his things like that's really yes that's how he became strong one of the things i don't like about baki is uh the his relationship with that lady like um it was kind of like fucking weird. Baki's landlord lady, I forget yeah. her name. Yeah, the daughter of the landlord that he rents yeah, from. Because yeah. it kind of reminded me of like hentai. The way that like, sex scene was weird. It I, was didn't see, really I didn't see. I didn't see the sex scene yet, but like the way that they were talking to one another and the way that they like, he just like kissed her and like did things that, that like wasn't with permission and did certain things like that it was like it, it kind of like the way the noises that she made and the way she talked and stuff was kind of yeah, like I can feel very it. hentai to me anyway H- um so that was kind of strange there's not a lot of women in this show besides her i think she's the no, only like named yes. woman character in the whole this thing this is a big man show this is a show that dudes are watching other dudes fucking and each other like to yeah. my knowledge from what I've read, uh, you barely see any woman fighters, if any. I think there's, like, a woman in the background of the scene where the bald guy gets his hand cut off and she, like, shrieks. <laughs> she screams. And there's, there's Baki's landlady and then her daughter, and that's about it. Yep. Um, wh- What was I going to go on? Yeah, ha- Hanayama is my favorite character in the show. He's the big Yakuza dude. But before that, I did want to touch on... Uh, Baki's dad, like, they didn't really do a good job at showing how insane he is in the in the mon- in the anime. Like, he kills Baki's mom. Spoilers for the 30-year-old manga. Um, uh, he kills Baki's mom. So, okay. yeah, ba- Baki's dad and Baki are fighting on an airstrip. I think it might be one of the flashbacks in the show. I vaguely remember seeing it. They fight on an airstrip when Baki was like 16 or 15 or something to test their strength. And Baki's mom gets in the middle of it 
and Yujiro just picks her up and crushes her spine while he's hugging her and just throws her on the ground. And that, he does shit like that. Yujiro has also canonically, like, Yujiro's raped people. He's raped, like, one or two women canonically just to spread his seed around further because he wants to get that's stronger fucked. kids. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Is not normal. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I have a problem with elements like that in shows. Mental. Yeah, and I don't like how they're handling the women characters so no, far. the women characters seen. in Baki aren't, aren't very good. I like how, like, outlandish things are, and I like, like, the fight scenes and shit like that, but... Yeah, like, definitely, I, I know this isn't a show about women, but, like, you saying that, like, is that in any of the anime adaptations, or is that just in the no, manga? No, that is in the manga. That That's definitely, like, one of those things. It's definitely an early 90s manga thing. It's like, look how dark it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. That's like uh, they cut out that scene where Afro killed that girl, like that paraplegic girl or paraplegic yep, 100%. man and his daughter and yep. shit. Yep, 100%. Because like, as much as you want to watch it, yeah. So in the Afro Samurai manga, he kill he straight up kills a paraplegic woman and her younger brother just to use them as meat shields. And if that shit happened in the anime, like he went from a dark hero to like... An he's asshole. evil yeah he's yeah. <laughs> fucking evil so they cut that out very very good idea to cut something like that out and do you think that a lot of that goes hand in hand like this is trying to be like a very male show you think that's kind of like the thing that's like a chauvinistic thing where like they're trying to make a male show about fighting and and sweaty dudes and and like honor and stuff like that so they kind of have women characters that are not amazing uh, it, like it's, it's amazing. i will say that like i don't think it's as bad as afro samurai so no, far <laughs> i don't like what you said about what happened in the manga like that's not cool to me to include in the story but they don't have shots like an afro samurai does where the women are licking the one bald dude and, yeah. and they say they're they, they're literally just there during the scene to lick his head i liked that that was a good scene <laughs> But uh, no, I think I I think like I know quite a bit about older manga and stuff, and I've read quite a lot of series from that time. And it's just I I haven't read any Baki Do, so I don't know what it's like. I'm sure it's a lot better because it's modern. But in the '90s, that was what anime was like. It was Fist of the North Star, and it was the first part of JoJo was like that too, where all the fights are just who's bigger and who's more manly, and all the women are just to scream or like objects for the men to fight over. That's not great. No, and that that was old anime. Like that was old shonen anime for the most part. I shouldn't say everything was, but that that was a lot of it. I guess they were trying to appeal more to teenage boys. That's like, what that it is. That's what shonen is. About. Yeah, yeah. It's literally just four teenage boys, and then there was I forget. There's a there's a term for young women's anime too. I forget what it's called though. Or young young women's manga. What would be an example of that? Like uh... it'd be like Sailor Moon, things like that. Uh, like I love Sailor Moon. Shows. Sailor Moon's have you, sick. Have you watched Sailor Moon like recently? No, not recently. It's not bad. It's a good show to have out of the background. Do you know yeah, that? Do you know that uh, in Japan? I think I've told you this, but Sailor Moon. There's like two girls who are part of. I don't know. It's like the team of the girls or whatever, and they're like dating in the Japanese version, and then in the American version, they're fucking cousins. No, I just don't know that. Huh. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> America hates gay people. Write yep, that down. That's true. <laughs> Write it down. America hates Sailor Moon being gay. Jim, do you want to hear some stuff that happens in the Baki manga? Sure. So Baki needs to envision. I'm just going to run off some things. It's a very hard show to talk about, so I'm just going to listen to this. Shoot some stuff If you like this, you'll like Baki. Uh, Baki needs to envision the strongest opponent, so he envisions a praying mantis that's life sized and his size because insects are the best fighters. And then he that that literally happens in B stars. Yeah, does it? Does it actually? Yeah. Uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, L- Lugosi. He fucking has to, like, g- overcome his fear of meat or something. So he has yeah. a moth and he envisions the moth and he talks to, like a spectral version of the moth and That's shit. That's literally he eats because it. of that Baki scene. I guarantee, yeah. I guarantee his daughter was like, Dad, can you help me write this thing? And he's like, Yeah, just do the thing well, from Baki. <laughs> I don't know if that was that case or she just like paid homage to it or something, but yeah, yeah that's true. exactly what I thought that's of. That's really said that. funny. I never knew that. So Baki does that. Baki also, and it's so ferocious that people watching him do this can see the insect in their brain that he's fighting. That's how good he is at it. I wanted to learn more about the hip- hypnosis shit that was going on in this show because Baki can do it and Dorian can do it. They can, like, because Dorian, like, made his opponents, like, envision, like, oh, them yes. beating the fuck out of yes. him while he, like, went around them and, like, 
karate chopped them Baki's in the head. dad has a thing that's like that too. I forget what he calls it, but it's a walk that like, and all of the things in the show are technically real martial arts. You can look it up and they have roots somewhere. But Baki's dad has a thing. He like puts his arms up and it makes it look like he has no defense. And then he walks up to you in a perfectly straight line without faltering. And it makes your mind think that he hasn't moved. And then he's like an inch away from your face when you realize it. It's just stupid shit. That is like a very fun element of the show. Yeah. That it's just not fighting. That there's a lot of... That definitely like half of it is like, I'm a muscle man and I fight. But half of it is like mind games. Like that part yes, where they're it, trying to take out it's, Dorian. It's and a they, lot of but, weirdness. They take out that guy who, like, he literally, like, almost beat to death. And he's, like, in, like, a wheelchair. And he re- rolls up. And they're, like, you can have the last punch. And he, like, empowers himself, like, out of the wheelchair, out of a coma. Oh and gets God. up and, like, punches Dorian. It's really good. That's epic. What's okay. some other stuff that happens in the uh, manga? Some other stuff. Baki needs to get stronger. That's a lot of Baki getting stronger, if you couldn't tell. Mm. Baki needs to get stronger, so he travels to a big mountain. He runs for, like, 18 hours straight to this mountain. And then he, he lives on the mountain with one of Yujiro's old people that he knew, a big, huge lumberjack guy. But Baki fights the mountain ape there. And Baki goes inside the cave of this mountain ape. And his name his, the ape's name is Yashazaru Ape. And the ape has, like, dozens of his family members' skeletons all lined up in, like, samurai poses and shit as Baki walks in. That's and like that's the, how they fight. That's like the under, like, the uh, like the hollow earth and fucking Godzilla. With all <laughs> Actually, King Kongs everywhere. Li- literally like that. Baki also in the newest series, the newest anime series, they teased it at the very end, but I knew about it from the manga. They defreeze, or, or they rethaw, I should say. They thaw out a Neanderthal, and he's the strongest person, and they have to fight a Neanderthal. Fuck you know sakes! His, name's, his name is Pickle, and they find a big Pickle. fossil. <laughs> they find a big frozen fossil of him, and he's beating up a mammoth. He's punching a mammoth in the head. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. But uh, one of my favorite fights from the manga is with a dude called the Cord Cutter. His, his technique is like severing tendons and stuff he's a he's a surgeon so he'll like put his fingers underneath your muscle and sever your tendons and shit and i forget what baki learns about him baki learns that he's like been treating and testing on random civilians and baki really doesn't like this so in their first fight it's one of my favorite manga spreads and i want to get a screenshot of it i know i have it saved somewhere but it's it's a two-page full spread where Baki sprints at him and kicks him in the face as hard as he can. And it's like two full pages flip back and forth of him just kicking him into a wall and the fight's like over. <laughs> it's just really good. Ridiculousness. That's what it, this, uh, this whole thing is It's the show, about. the MTV show, Ridiculousness. Is that an MTV show? What was that about? It's uh, the when all the shows were copying Tosh.0. Oh, Oh. It's just the oh, same thing. Fuck. That's like Do you remember ten, that era of television? That was like ten years yeah. ago, bro. There's there was literally like that's a, a, that was a ten YouTube channel. Tosh point oh shows. That was a YouTube channel on fucking like TV, live TV, where Daniel Tosh would take funny YouTube videos and fucking just talk over them. That was literally like a React you, channel, but yeah, it on a cable television. On cable, yeah. And then he'd bring the people on, yeah. Baki could kill Tosh point oh. I hope he does. That's like bad content. That's the kind of content you look back on that and you're like, how the fuck did that get popular? That's just fucking yeah, garbage. It's an there era was a, of the internet. There was this show that I watched on Comedy Central that was called Cocktails when I was like 12. And it was That's just like. a vague memory in my it mind. It was just a circle of like disgusting fucking men, like, like disgusting yes, like comedians yes, 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 yes. and like greasy ass dudes who would talk about like stories that were probably 100% fake. And they would just say, like, this crazy thing happened. And I, I remember one of the stories was in London. Like, it was in London, Ontario. It was about a guy who went to a rub and tug in rub and Ontario. And, and it was like... Rubbing Ontario. Rubbing Ontario. And it was like, at the end of the story, he got, like, shit all over him. Like, uh, well, he took a woman home and she, like, shit all over him. It's like, how the fuck did they make that a TV show? That's terrible. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's just like, wow, we looped it all together. It's just like Baki from the 90s. Tosh.0 truly does mirror Baki from the 90s. They're both products of their time. <laughs> that was uh, that was a big tangent Jim went on about human shit. <laughs> uh, so, did you, have you watched the 90s anime? I haven't. It's an OVA. I think it's a couple episodes long. 
and it follows, I don't know the manga arc off the top of my head, the name of it, but it's like a big underground tournament. I think they, I think they meet up at the underground tournament in the show that you watched for like, I think that's where they meet up. Is first. that, does that, does that follow into one another then? Like, do they have the tournament? Kind like- of, yeah. So all the Baki manga, like they're all really slanted and you can almost start anywhere and you'll just start following along you might not get some of the references but it's not like you need to start from grappler baki they don't expect you to at all but yeah you'll see a lot of reoccurring characters over the years of the manga and like a lot of the same scenes and art like tournaments happening over and over it's really interesting i i'm wondering if like because baki on netflix takes place after they have a big tournament yes and part so of the reason why is, the tournament yeah. guy brings the guys together he does that they placed really high in the tournament so maybe that was it. Maybe that was just a continuation yeah. from the anime. Yeah, Biscuit Oliva, though, is the main Biscuit. centerpiece. Stop laughing at him. <laughs> Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit Oliva is the main centerpiece of the new Baki Netflix series. Baki needs to go to, once again, he needs to become stronger. He uh, he goes to the Arizona State Prison where Biscuit Oliva is Mr. Unchained. And he's, like, the boss of the prison there. And, uh... Is yeah. he to fight him? Is he fighting Biscuit? Yeah, he wants to like fight the strongest people there. So he he learns a couple of them. He learns Biscuit, and you learn, uh, what the fuck's his name? It's a pirate dude. He learns like a big pirate, pirate dude. Really dude. He's a pirate, and he gets knocked out, Jim. And then everyone thinks he's knocked out, and he goes yo ho ho, and he starts to sing a pirate shanty as he gets up, and That's then he like rubs dirt on his face, and a big pirate flag appears. That, I, I think I know why you like this show then. <laughs> he can also, that's the same dude that when he gets outside to fight people, he goes, the wind is coming, perfect day to set sail, and then the wind will whistle through the prison. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> that, that's, uh, <laughs> that arc is stupider, Jim. They have a character called, <laughs> they have a, they have a character, it's one character, but it's three people, and it's called Mouth. Mouth? And oh, you were telling this. Your mouth, I, I thought you eyes, started watching, tongue yeah. or something? They've got its tongue, lips, and teeth, I believe is what they're called. And it's three people that act as one, so they finish each other's sentences. They all talk one after another to formulate coherent sentences. And they do, like, special moves because they all know what each other are thinking. <laughs> they, like, fling each other into the opponent and stuff like they, that. Probably they, like, a big, s- rolly like fucking ball. They, stand in a ball. triangle around you, and they're like, now we've got you in our triangle stance. Our bodies are aligned to each other's energy, and you can't escape. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. <laughs> That's epic, Jim. Stop. But, yeah, Jim, when Baki so is epic. serialized in English, I am buying it instantly. And it's, it's a travesty that it hasn't been, like... Like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is so nicely produced in English now. There's hardcovers and everything. They should just do that with Baki. Is this guy written anything else besides Baki? Like, any other series that I would know? I don't really think so. Let me double check for you, but I'm pretty sure he's just kind of... Baki-ing. Yeah, like, Baki-do is still being written. Baki gets confusing, eventually, because it's not really big in the West. But I'm I'm pretty certain he's just continuing to write Baki-do to this day. He's not really worked on anything big. That's not because the, not the animation else, yeah. style really reminded me in the Netflix show of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Is it the yeah. same studio making the I, two shows? I could see. I mean, it's a Netflix in-house thing. Yeah, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure one is David's production, and they do have a very similar look. It's because of all the bold lines and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Keisuke Itagaki is also very interesting because he actually does know a shit ton about martial arts. Like he's very passionate, and you can tell uh baki sold around 75 million volumes so it's by no means a small show and uh the author was a mar he before he was a manga artist he was actually in the japanese airborne for five years and then he was a part of the japanese ground self-defense force for a year jesus and he's like an amateur boxer and he's completed in national sport boxing festivals man writes what he knows man (laughs) writes what he knows he holds a degree in the Kempo to Sh- Shoronji Kempo. I can kind of see why, because the lady who wrote Beastars is done. Like, she's not writing any more Beastars. Uh, but she was saying that she just wants to work on other stuff. Like, she doesn't want to be pigeonholed into doing one thing or the other. Yeah, I think I she might that. do more stuff in the universe, but she doesn't want to, like, just keep doing Beastars or whatever. It's which nice is pro- that Beastars is, like, done. It's nice yeah. that it is nicely done and wrapped up. It's, it's how I feel like about that. Cowboy Bebop, too. Yeah. That like Cowboy Bebop nice is just is just a show, and you yeah. watch it, and then it's fucking done. It's just done, and the movie takes place before the show ends. Netflix show is almost out, eh? 
Yeah, that Netflix show can kiss my whole ass. I'm not I fucking am, watching that shit. I am. I am. Dan, okay. Not holding Here, my breath on it, but I. Here's my caveat. Can. Okay, this is my rule. If you're one of my good friends, this is what you're gonna do. You will watch the Sweet Home adaptation on Netflix <laughs> before you yeah, watch the Cowboy Bebop one. Fine, I will. I'm watching the League of Legends Arcane animation right now on Netflix, but I'll watch Sweet Home after. If that leads you into playing more League of Legends, I'm <laughs> no, it won't. It back. won't. It won't. That's trust it. me. Dan had a Dan's talking about this before. We had a horrible addiction to League of Legends, where he played like 1,800 hours or some god awful thing. Yeah, I get really mad at League of Legends. Now we aid and abet each other in our addiction to Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah, and, and it's fun. I always have. How many hours do you have now? Like two hundred and thirty. I have like four hundred and twenty-six or something. I have a lot. That's yeah, a lot for a me lot. in a multiplayer game. Yeah, that's a lot in general. But I think we're almost wrapping up, Jim. That was the Baki episode. Yeah. Any any last thoughts on Baki? My last thoughts would be like, I think you should give it. A, like a little bit of a while if you know you're not gonna like it from you'll what we've know said, you like it from the second you see it if you yeah, if you know you're not gonna like it from what we've described like i definitely have some caveats to it like i don't like some of the content that's in it so there's that but you know i think that they did include some of that bad stuff from the manga in the anime series and like it, it's it, the ridiculousness is really fun because it, it doesn't feel as long as something like dragon ball z or something like that where that show i can't even fucking watch because it just takes too fucking long to do anything it's not like that which is good what were you gonna say about baki dan i was gonna say everyone work out and you'll eventually look like baki and don't let anyone tell you that you can't look like baki what's uh the one punch man workout it's like run one kilometer a a day it's a kilometer it's it's no it's not one kilometer i think it's 10k a day 100 sit-ups 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups push-ups squats squats that's it that's it. And then, and then you'll look like Baki. I did it for two or three days, and then I wanted to kill myself, and I stopped, and my legs were all aching and numb and locking up. Yeah, that's bad. That, that's how you wreck your body, bro. That's too much exercise. No, Jim. I watched the anime, and he got real bad. He got real strong. So, uh, I think we're wrapping up on Shack Out Back. This is Shack Out Back Nights. At Jim nights. is going to wrap himself up in a big flannel blanket, put a big, uh, what's it called? The big Jim's Russian Jim's going to wrap on. himself up in a big medical waste blanket and haul himself <laughs> down the aisle. Uh, I'm going to go to work in a couple hours for all night. Uh, Radicus is going to come with me. He's going to sit in my sweater pocket and poke his little gross, little greasy head out in the middle of the night and scare people. I'm going to um, try and convince Cassie to watch The Warriors. Because I really want to watch the Warriors. Is that the movie, the Warriors, or the Cats? The not the Cats, the movie where they go, the Warriors come okay. out to play, yay! That one. Oh, we should uh, we should make our own adaptation of that Warriors book series. That'll be good. No, uh, don't. Uh, so for Jim's pick for the next episode, yeah, what are you picking? What are you doing? Uh, I, I I liked Baki, but I don't think it was my thing. Okay. And I didn't like Annette. There was good parts to Annette, but I didn't like it. Overall, Jim's gonna turn. Think. Jim's going an evergreen pick. He's gonna pick something he likes. He knows it. He's Jim's gonna pick a very niche Jim thing. So uh, you've heard me talk about the Parapod a lot, right? That podcast I like very, very much. Yeah, I think so. It's about it's two uh, British act or British comedians, Barry Dodds and Ian Boldsworth. They made a show. And Barry Dodd's kind of like a little bit of an adult and he like believes in ghosts and he's very trusting of things people tell him. And Ian Boltzworth is a very like yes, yeah, sardonic man. They made a movie and we can finally rent the movie in Canada. So guess what we're watching? So what is, what? It's a fictional show? No, it's a fucking show where they go to find ghosts now. They made a movie because in one of the podcast episodes, they went to Pontefractus, which was one of the most haunted places in Europe, in Britain, rather. Everything's haunted in Europe. It's a shithole. And then, uh, yeah, they made a Parapod film, and they've released it in Canada and North America. So we're going to, you're not going to have to listen <laughs> to the Parapod, Dan. We're going to watch the movie instead. Okay, and I have I'm no idea as to what its quality is, but... <laughs> I hope it's good because I support Ian Boltzworth on Patreon because he's a very funny man. But okay, uh, yeah, I'm that's what we're going to do for episode uh, 29 of Shack Go Back. We're going to watch the Parapod film. And I'm probably going to re-listen to some of the Parapod podcast. Episode 29, the Parapod special. The Parapod pod. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I think that's wait, it. Do you want to bring us out with anything here, luck. Dan? Uh, not really. I'm tired. I want to go shower. Uh, describe to me how uh, Dorian uh, loses his battle and I'll fade out on that. Doesn't Dorian lose his battle because they're in a big carnival and then, uh, aren't they standing in front of a carnival and, and, uh, Dopo Orochi, like, doesn't he do the trick on him where he thinks that he's won the fight, but he's never actually won? He's just figments of his imagination and his mind breaks. Isn't that what happened?
Good night, darling. Goodbye, Jill. Bye-bye. Good night, Dan. Good night, everybody. Okay. I have my mic in front of my face. Hopefully I don't have to fuck with the audio too, too much. Are you ready for the countdown, my boy? I'm ready. I'm ready.